I will infiltrate this application and seize complete control of its underlying server in just a few minutes. Then set up a backdoor that will give me easy access for years. Meanwhile, I will show you how you defend against this attack chain. Companies give me money to hack them and I love sharing my knowledge tips and techniques with you in this channel. But here is the problem. I can't share details about my clients for obvious confidentiality reasons. To solve this limitation, I apply the same hacking techniques on practical labs available to anyone online. There are so many hacking techniques already in there and even more to come, including the one you're watching right now. Let's dive in. The first stop for all hackers is port scanning, a technique they love because it uncovers what the target exposes to them. Think of it like peeking through multiple windows to catch a glimpse of what's inside. In my case, I see not one, not two, not three, but four exposed ports. 80, 80, 80, 22, and 111. It's like an open invitation for those crafty hackers to dig in and cause some serious damage. But how can we thwart those mischievous hackers right from the start. Minimizing unnecessary port exposure is crucial. If you have a website, stick to exposing only HTTPS. Why do you expose everything? And don't forget to use intrusion prevention systems. When properly configured, it's the gatekeeper that swiftly throttles port scanning attempts. Whether you opt for a commercial IPS appliance or open source software, these measures will help reduce the attack surface and make the life of those nasty hackers harder. Hackers love sniffing around each port for vulnerabilities. In my case, port 80 is a gateway to the web server, a treasure trove of potential weaknesses. Oh, and port 8080 hosting Tomcat. Oh God, I love this application server. I know it has an administrative interface that I always have fun with. Port 22 is also open for SSH to allow sysadmins to remotely control the server. And I now can read it too. With the correct credentials, I can also connect to the server, just like any other sysadmin. And that port 111, I've never seen that before, but I won't be deterred especially in the beginning. I'll set my sight on the ports I know like the back of my hand, eager to uncover hidden vulnerabilities. This is where it gets interesting, because I'll start with Tomcat. If I gain access to the admin dashboard, it's game over. I try the default credentials, which are, praise yourself, Tomcat for both username and password. Duh. Unfortunately, I get access denied. It's not all wasted effort though, because I just learned some good and bad news. The good news is that the credentials are correct, but the bad news is that the GUI admin dashboard has been disabled. But hackers never get tired. If you should only get one thing from this, it's that hackers never give up. Time to turn my attention to the website on port 80. Port 80 has a lame user interface. Who still uses this old design from the 90s? But hackers don't give a shit about looks. They focus on the code that drives the website behind the screens. Hackers always start exploring the application like any other benign user, but once they find a window of opportunity, like this registration feature with a file upload, they reveal their true nature. I smell a weak spot here, and I'm not giving up until I find a vulnerability. When I upload something other than an image, I notice that the application appends a benign extension to block any malicious attempt. Even after many bypass attempts, I couldn't upload malicious file. Kudos for the developer here. Does this mean that I should give up? Hell no. I further inspect the technologies used by the website and check this out. Drupal 8. Hmm. The name rings a bell. With a few keystrokes, I unearthed a plethora of online exploits targeting multiple weaknesses in this famous CMS technology, all within reach for anyone with an internet connection just waiting to be weaponized. But let's not blindly use them. Oh. Oh no, I'm no script kitty. I take the time to understand public exploits, ensuring their intentions are not harmful to my computer. It's targeting the user registration. It's sending the payload. It's running a command here. Do you recognize anything interesting? Yep, it's using a Linux command. Echo this content right here, an emoji, and pipe it to a file called hello.txt. All right. It's posting that URL with the payloads and then it's requesting to see if the hello.txt file has been created. If yes, then we get the message check the URL to hello.txt. 
Okay, so for me, sounds benign. Well, benign for us. I download one promising proof of concept and put it to the test. I'm using burp proxy to capture the exploits traffic. My heart is pounding with anticipation and lo and behold, it worked. The proof of concept created a file in the root directory confirming that I hold the power to run arbitrary commands on this server. I have just found the first key to get in, but hackers won't stop until they have total control. The defenders had a blind spot as big as an elephant. The solution was as simple as upgrading to the latest version of Drupal. Too bad for them because now I am inside the house. Now that we have initial foothold on the server, it's time to explore the inside and find other keys to even bigger doors that hide more power. However, I encountered a hiccup. Running commands through burp only displayed the last line of the output. What do we have in ATC? pass wd tomcat 7 what's this it seems like i have only the last line of the file how on earth can i benefit from this if i see through a broken lens within the house to solve this limitation i redirect the output to a file and read its content now that i gained full visibility time for some extensive enumeration remember tomcat well the time has come to read the configuration file i have the power to run arbitrary commands on the server Server. I learned that it is running with Tomcat user. Aha, I might be able to switch to this new user, a potential privilege escalation opportunity that hackers can't resist. With some luck, I might be able to edit its content. And if I succeed, I will open yet another door and get closer to owning the entire system. With bated breath, I list the permissions of the Tomcat configuration file, but it turned out to be protected and I couldn't even read its content. Time for a change in strategy. Enough with this lame burp repeater thing. I focus on acquiring a reverse shell to be more comfortable and increase my productivity. By compromising the system sooner, defenders will have lower chance of catching me. It's a cat and mouse game. But for some reason, I didn't receive any callback. So I'm going to expose a local port using ngrok and I'm going to take that host and port, generate my reverse shell. It's just taken from pen tester monkey and I'm going to listen on that port 8443 and let's run that command right here. If we send it, do we get something back? Nope. Oh, what a bummer. We don't have a reverse shell? Well, sometimes things don't go as planned, right? In this swirling storm of ideas, I feel confused and I need to take a step back and see the bigger picture. Albert Einstein once said, out of clutter, find simplicity. Let's examine our current situation here. We've managed to run commands remotely, but we are trapped within the confines of a limited shell and can't read or edit the Tomcat configuration file. The solution presents itself. It seems the only way to move forward is by collecting more data about this server. I only need one oversight, one misconfiguration, just one weakness. After some digging, I spot a strange executable that anyone can run as root. Wow, that door is a huge deal. If I can open it, I will get the keys to the entire kingdom. When I run it, it revealed an intriguing message, copying root files. But where and how were these files being copied? I have to understand this behavior if I want to exploit it. When I inspect the strings of the binary, I discover the code responsible for the exact copy operation. It's using the SCP command. However, do you see the weakness here? It isn't invoked from an absolute path. This means that I can trick the executable to run my own evil version of SCP. Here's how I would do it. Remember the SSH service I discovered earlier? I told you defenders should not expose things they don't need, or at least protect sensitive ports on the firewall. That way, they can only allow access from the sysadmin's source IP address. Well, I'm going to leverage this lack of due diligence to gain full control. To achieve this, I created a malicious execution named SCP that simply copies my public SSH key to the root user. If my plan succeeds, I would get a really comfortable shell with unrestricted permissions to the entire system. The rush of adrenaline surged through my veins. I quickly defined a new path environment variable and ran the vulnerable script. If everything goes well, my evil twin SCP command 
would run and I will be able to SSH into the server with full privileges. My heart pounded within my chest as the terminal window unfolded before my eyes. There, in all its glory, an exciting root shell prompt, instantly granting me its immense power. I was king. But not for so long if they find what I have achieved. I need to be able to come back whenever I want to, even after years from now. Even if Drupal was upgraded. But how can I achieve that without raising too much attention? Creating a new user? That would be a red flag for any decent sysadmin. If I want to stand any chance of persistence for years without detection, I needed to to blend with the system's behavior and hide in plain sight. I have an idea. Not many system owners check for file integrity, so I can leverage this oversight by modifying the Tomcat configuration file and enable the GUI manager dashboard. Remember, it was disabled. And because I'm king, all the power is concentrated at my hand. So I open the configuration file and make a slight change that will hopefully go unnoticed. Now. Whenever I want to come back and get a reverse shell, all I have to do is visit the manager dashboard with the Tomcat credentials, upload a shell and regain access. With this backdoor in place, it's time to cover my tracks by removing the suspicious file on the web server, deleting the authorized key file and wiping out the logs to make it harder for any potential investigation. 